As Maya Angelou once wrote, people forget what you said, people forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made, how you made them feel. By a show of hands, how many of us like to talk about feelings? There's a few brave people, I think one or two hands up. But let's be honest, most of us don't. I'm a development psychologist and human service practitioner by profession. And what's evident to me is the different perspectives, beliefs, and experiences that we all have. Most of the times, my job requires me to help my clients help make sense of situations and the meanings or interpretations that they attribute to them. These situations usually are conflict or confusion states. This requires a level of vulnerability and a willingness for them to explore how they feel, think, and what they do. But there's levels to this, or different aspects, right? The word meaning itself means to understand, but there's different levels of understanding. It's not just a cognitive task, but translates to what we feel and what we do and the events that precede them. For example, you may think, why am I thinking these thoughts? Why am I feeling pain? And why am I shouting? So it's not just a moment of understanding. I work with various ages, and the one thing that amazes me is the different interpretations we all have towards like depression, anxiety, or mental health. We also have the pop psychology side that uses words like self-care, toxic, or toxicity, right? Side note, toxic generally means something bad or unhealthy. And pop psychology refers to psychological terminology that we use within a specific generation. How we feel, or how we use terminology, sorry, affects what we feel, what we do, and what we think, as well as the truth about ourselves. Ultimately, it dictates the quality of our life. I have a question for you. Has anyone ever used a word incorrectly, and when you find out the true meaning or the usage of it, you have like a mini identity crisis moment, right? see a few hands up. <laughs> One of those, my life is a lie moments. I love them. Those, those situations are a true reflection of how meaning can affect us. When we use words incorrectly with, or without fully understanding them, we internalize it incorrectly as well. Remember, this all trickles down to what we feel, think, oops, sorry, and what we do. So let's use the word toxic for an example. When someone says so-and-so is toxic, I need to stay away from them. Versus when they say, so-and-so is so toxic, I'm addicted to being around them. Both people have identified, or both, yeah, people have identified that so-and-so is not good or healthy for them. However, in the latter, the person has made it fun and made it seem good to be around this person. It's almost glamorized. And in the former, the person has identified that it's not healthy to be around them. All this to say, how we attribute meaning prolongs the inevitability of truth and its consequences. Popularizing or glorifying negative effective states adds to this, and so does using words without understanding its true meaning. Another example, if someone calls you toxic and you don't fully understand the word, you will understand it based on its context, or the context that it was used in, or what you think it means. Our brains are created in such a way that we are constantly re-establishing and rewiring our schemas or mindsets. Another side note here. Schemas are cognitive frameworks that help us make sense of the world around us. So when we internalize unclear meaning, essentially we're internalizing misunderstanding. Another question. Did you know you can unknowingly misunderstand your way into a more serious mental health condition? Show of hands. Oh, everyone's quiet. <laughs> Let's break this down. I'll use the word of, or the analogy of planting a tree and the word toxic since we've been using it from the beginning of this speech. Um, so when somebody calls you toxic, right, you, you accept that label and you start to think, okay, I'm toxic, right? We've planted that seed. Then we begin to water it. As we're watering it, we're nurturing it and we start to feel toxic, right? So we've gone from our head down to the emotions. Then, over time, this solidifies, the tree grows, and we start behaving toxically, right? As time goes by, reinforcements happen, then the tree grows stronger and stronger. Eventually, that belief becomes modified. So we've gone from, okay, I'm toxic, to I must be toxic because nobody wants to be around me, right? 
Now, let's say you start self-isolating. You notice a change in your eating and sleeping habits and an increase in negative thoughts. Just as a shot in the dark, does anybody know what these symptoms could be? Someone shout it out if you do have an idea. Depression, exactly. There you have it, your clinical depression. And this is how you may unknowingly misunderstand your way into a more serious mental health condition. My experience with misunderstood terminologies was self-care. How many of us are familiar with this word, maybe use it on a day-to-day -day or practice it? Pretty much everyone's hands are going up, right? And self-care is things like exercising, maybe getting your hair done, reading a book, right? But what happens if this doesn't feel good to do it? What if it feels like a responsibility rather than a way to relax or to care for yourself? I remember thinking that there was something wrong with me because whatever anyone suggested was self-care or something that people suggested was self-care didn't work for me. My epiphany was when, it, when I remembered that I'm an individual amongst a majority, that I may be different even though I'm similar in other ways. And if something didn't feel good, it just meant that it wasn't my way to care for myself. Most of us do not take the time to think about what we say and the meaning or interpretation it has. In turn, we don't realize how it affects what we do, what we think, and how we feel. In a generation that is proactive and part of a stay woke culture, how woke are you about meaning and interpretation? Again, I ask, did you know you can unknowingly misunderstand your way into a more serious mental health condition? It's easy to go online and look up the best depression inventory, do the list, or maybe look up characteristics of bipolar disorder and identify that you have some of those characteristics. But this doesn't mean that you have the clinical condition. If you feel that there is something deeper going on, I urge you, seek professional advice. Do not self-diagnose. And when we discuss anything mental health related, or sorry, mental health or anything related to it, I hope you do so with truth, appropriate meaning, truth, and transparency. Referring back to Ms. Maya Angelou, you may not remember what we said here today or what we did, but I hope myself and the other speakers will leave you feeling in, incited, or sorry, aware and enlightened. Thank you.